All right, welcome back everybody to another Bible study as we give the Most High all the honor, the glory, and all the praise. My title now says, I got a testimony while I'm on my deathbed. I got a testimony while I'm on my deathbed. And I want to go back to Apostle Paul for a moment in 2 Timothy chapter 4. A lot of times we don't want to think about when we get older, when we get ready to die, we should say. Death is something that a lot of people are afraid of. But I think the problem with most people is not so much of dying is that they don't know where they're going to wind up at. Because if you know where you're going, if you have lived this life following the Most High and doing His will, shouldn't have no worries at all. And Paul was up to the point now where he's about to check out, we like to say down in Dallas, Texas. But he had a testimony while he was on his deathbed. So we go on to 2 Timothy chapter 4, verses 1 through 8. This is Timothy's commission and Paul's departure. And Paul writes to encourage Timothy to keep working hard. Fight the good fight. Work hard because Paul know that he's getting ready to die. So Paul commanded Timothy to teach the truth no matter who don't like it, no matter what. And a lot of times with teaching the truth, you will find out that most people don't want to hear it. So we're dealing with verses 1 through 8. Once again, we're in 2 Timothy chapter 4. And it says in verse 1, I charge thee therefore before God, and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom. So Paul is showing us with, right here in Timothy that when I say you return, he will judge everybody, whether they are living or dead. See, the dead in Christ will rise first. I don't know why people are trying to get this, this escape route and think they're going to go before the, the dead in Christ. And, uh, you got, let's tell the truth, somebody. Let's tell the truth. The dead in Christ will rise first, but Paul is showing that the Savior is going to judge the quick and the dead. Woo, that let me know that I'm going to be judged. You're going to be judged no matter who you are. See, we all going to have to be judged. But the thing is, how have we lived our life? We so quick to judge each other. I didn't say rebuke each other. We so quick to judge each other. But a true friend will rebuke you. He will correct you. She will correct you out of love, scripturally, brotherly love. But the problem with most Christians is that you can't correct them nowadays. So Paul knows he's getting ready to die once again. And he gives these instructions, y'all. After all he went through, I don't think a lot of us understand what Paul really went through. When he was locked up in prison for so long. In the wintertime, how cold it would be. How they done him. Verse 2 says, preach the word, be instant in season, out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. Like I was just saying, most Christians don't want to hear this. They don't want to be corrected. They don't want you to point out their sins. Don't point out to me that I'm lying and I'm drinking and I'm hoarding around. Go mess with somebody else. Go mess with the homosexual. He's still gay. At least I ain't worse than he is. Or go mess with that girl over there who's still a prostitute. Leave me alone. When you point out people's sins, they got a problem with you. But see, but what Paul is telling Timothy is that you correct them. You, you reprove them. You rebuke them. But you also, you, you, you encourage them. You cheer them on. When you instruct them, make sure you be patient with them. See, this is the problem, once again, with the with most of the churches now. You can't get nobody in order because the ones that's in leadership most of the time is so messed up. So when you got messed up leadership, you got messed up church. I ain't talking about everybody church, y'all. Oh, there's so much to say with these, these eight scriptures. Verse 3 says, For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, uh-oh, but after their own lust shall they heap to themselves, teachers, scratch your ears, and say, having them itching ears. This is what's wrong with most churches right now, most preachers. They tickling your ears with this feel-good doctrine. When it comes to talking about what Paul 
like what Paul is getting ready to do, die, we skipping over that. We don't want to talk about persecution. We don't want to talk about getting your life right, repent. We don't want to talk about salvation. Now everything is about coming out your pocket. But if you look at verse 3 once again, he said the time will come when they will endure sound, excuse me, I said that wrong again, when they will not endure sound doctrine. I said that like that on purpose. They're after their own lust. This is why now people calling wrong right and calling right wrong. Being teachers of themselves, it's your nerve. This is why you see, when you see people in these church buildings that stay the same when they messed up, you know why. They got itching ears. You can't correct them. You can't rebuke them. You can't teach them. So the best thing for you to do is get out of that church. Look at verse 4. And they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned into fables. Ooh. Rather her a lie over the truth. Turning their ears from the truth. I don't want to hear about that. You trying to convict me with your sermon. Stop talking to me about shacking up and hoeing around and getting drunk and staying out all night and then doing what I want to do. Stop talking to me about that. The very well things that we need to be talking about, we skipping over. That's why the world and the church look so much alike now. Anything is being allowed now. I'm still talking about Paul on his deathbed. See, I, 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 boy, I, I, y'all, when I get ready to leave her, I want to be just like this. I want to lay out everything that I know. I want to teach somebody something so when I get ready to go on out of here, I'm saying go on out of here, but I mean I ain't, I'm going to, the meek will inherit the earth. The new kingdom will be, the new holy city, the new Jerusalem will be right here on, on earth. But I'm talking about when I leave this flesh. When I'm getting ready to be offered, if that's what got to happen, hey, let it happen. I want to be able to let somebody know something, to watch out for this, watch out for that. We got to pass the torch on, y'all. Look at verse 5. Paul says, but watch thou in all things endure afflictions do the work of an evangelist make full proof of thy ministry watch out for all things it's a lot to watch out for nowadays y'all but he say do the work of an evangelist in other words you keep on being strong in the ministry you keep preaching you keep teaching Timothy you, you, you must press on regardless of what's going on what the situation is what it look like preach regardless Verse 6 says, for now here it is right here. This is what I want to really focus on. This is why I called this video um, uh, uh, on my deathbed. I got a testimony while I'm on my deathbed. See, you can't have a you can't have a testimony without a test. Now let's look at verse 6 real close. For I am now ready to be offered and the time of my departure is at hand. He said, I am now ready to be raptured out. Oh, excuse me. I am now ready to be offered and the time of my departure is at my hand. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Look at verse 8. And then he says, Henceforth, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day, and not to me only, but unto all them also that love is appearing. Paul just summed up his whole life. In verse 7, I fought the good fight, I finished my course, I have kept the faith. How many of us are fighting the good fight, how many of us really want to finish this course and are we really keeping the faith? Paul was ready to die. Hmm. I am ready to be offered once again. Let me paint a picture for you because the Bible don't go into a whole lot of detail about you know what happened with Paul's death and all that. But we can just paint a picture because we know about Rome. Now, I'm just kind of going off the spirit with this. 
not saying this is all the way right and what happened to Paul, but we can tell that when you go back to Rome, y'all, if you went into that execution place, you would see nothing but blood scattered everywhere. Let's go back to their time. Let's just let's just paint a picture and go back to their time and look at what them Roman soldiers would do, how they would kill you. You see the movies when they put your head on that chopping block. And that big old Roman soldier is standing there with that big blade getting ready to just slice your head off. Head hit the floor and you know what they hang the head on the little stem or whatever. Just that was real. Now that could have been the way Paul went out. I'm not saying that's all the way true. I'm just, that's my spiritual mind, my thinking. Uh, that's why I say that's my opinion. Let me say it like that. That's my opinion because he was locked up. He was in Rome. And that's the way them Roman soldiers would kill you. Paul was, 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 his time was up. But do you think Paul was worried about, they going to chop my head off, is that the case? Paul wanted people to see the Savior in him. He got a testimony while he on his deathbed. He's talking to Timothy, letting him know, but he also got a testimony. Look, I done fought a good fight. I done been shipwrecked. I done had a, a, a snake bite me. I done went to prison. I done got beat up and left for dead. I got back up and started preaching Christ. I done went through all this. I'm ready to run to the executioner now. I done fought the good fight. Ain't nothing else I can do. I have kept the faith, and he did. He wanted people once again to see the Savior in him. He wasn't worried about the one that could harm the body. You know, I, I think about this. I'm going to try to wrap this video up, but I always think about this when people die. I always have a saying. You have a beginning date, a dash in the middle, and then your ending date. That dash in the middle, what can people really say about you? What can they really say about you? Were you good? Were you just low down, dirty, sorry, ripping people off? What kind of life are we living? See, we don't want to think about when I die. He wanted people once again to see the Savior in him. A lot of people when they die, they want to be remembered by having their name kind of chiseled off in the stone or, or, or have some building name after them. You know, a street name out them, whatever the case may be. But Paul didn't care about none of that. Paul was looking at eternal life. He the one that also said that we got to focus on the unseen and stop looking at the scene. Because the scene, is, the scene is temporary, but the unseen is eternal. Paul was looking at eternal life. Once again, when you look at it, Paul summed up his life in three ways. Once again, what did he say? First thing he said was, I fought the good fight. I've been a soldier in the army of the Most High. I've been on this road long enough. I put in work. But then he said, I finished my course. I did everything the best as I could. I finished my course. I didn't escape early. I finished my course. The reason why he said it because Paul could also relate to an athlete being in a race. That's why he, he, he would, would say certain things. Life is like a race. But see, Paul, the race Paul was talking about was the race for the most time. You know, a lot of people, they, they get in shape right now. They, they in some type of sport event. They trying to win the gold medals and trophies or whatever it is they can win. But see, that's temporary. We need to be trying to win a crown of righteousness. Some kind of crown. We need to be, we need to be focused on eternal life. So Paul said, this race that I'm talking about don't have nothing to do with sports. But it do have something to do with the most time. I done ran the race. Mm. Kept the fight. Kept the faith. That sum it up. What will we say on our deathbed? What will we say? I think about this a lot. Like I said, if I'm in my last stages, 
cut the camera on for me. And I'm real with this, y'all. Hey, when I was in the hospital in 2012, I told my little brother, hey, they, they talking about I might not make it. Cut the camera on. This might be my last video. Let me let me go out in the name. If I'm going to go, it's going to be in the name. If I'm going to stay, it's going to be in the name. Whatever father you choose for me, it's going to be in the name of the Most High. Let the church say amen, y'all. Paul, my, my final words as I close is Paul really looked at the, the eternal life once again. He looked forward to his death. That's amazing when you can go through so much that you be ready to die. Woo! He was looking forward to his death. He ran to the execution. I don't think a lot of people caught that. Why would I say that again? Because he said, I'm ready to be offered. You know what? I done went through all of this. I'm ready. Whatever y'all going to do to me, if you're going to chop my head off, if you're going to shoot me, if you're going to stab me, whatever you're going to do, go ahead and do it. I'm ready. It, it, Lady D says, if you stay ready, you ain't got to worry about getting ready. Amen, sister. Paul said, really, I'm prepared to die. I'm prepared to die. They don't, they don't really even say what the charges was against Paul. Well, let's look at our Savior. What did he do wrong? Nothing. Put him on the cross anyway. See, when you say, I want to be a Christian, I want to be a follower, do you really understand what you ask? Do you really understand what you're going to take on? Do you really understand who you got to give up, who you going to lose, places you can't go no more, things you got to stop doing? I don't know what the charges on Paul was, but all I know is that his time was up. I know back then they had burned Rome, you know, but I don't think Paul had nothing to do with that because Paul was a new man in Christ. And it was a guy, I think his name was Nero. I'm just trying to go off my memory. Nero was, was cold-blooded. And people was trying to gain favor with him. See, it wasn't it wasn't popular for you to be a Christian back then. It really ain't popular popular all that popular now, is it? They would have you killed quick. And being beheaded was very popular in Rome. That's why I just in my spiritual mind, I think that I can like I say I don't have proof of that in my opinion. But I think they I think they beheaded Paul. You know, so y'all I got a testimony why I'm on my deathbed. Think about that. Just think about that title. I got a testimony why I'm on my deathbed, knowing that I'm getting ready to die. So I got to lay out everything I need to say before I die. This is why we also need somebody else under us right now. We all need somebody to take over. It was always somebody to take over in the Bible. We always need somebody under us. When Moses' time was up, there was Joshua. When Saul messed up King Saul, David had his shot. I mean, you can go on and on. We, we need people put in play because we're not going to be around here forever. So with that being said, I got a testimony while I'm on my deathbed. I got to lay everything out for you, Timothy. That closes out our Bible study, y'all. May the Lord add a blessing to the readers, the hearers, and most of all, doers of his holy word. That's 2 Timothy chapter 4, verses 1 through 8. Y'all have a blessed night. Peace.